Hello everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. How was your holiday plops, you Peter? Good holiday very good. Had great holiday plops. Yes. Went to the land of nether. Mm -hmm. Screw the nether. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and before you ask, I did not partake in the local culture in I the told sense you, that... I told you you wouldn't. Uh, uh, I didn't no, believe I, me. I thought... Known pothead. Peter I said. Austin. I said they're going to museums. Yeah, and you that's can it. do That's what we did. And, but I said both. they won't do both. They'll go to museums. Yeah. Okay. Well, you were right. I feel vindicated. It's been years since I uh, was, you know, did did anything like that. And I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of past it now. And I, that I've, I've kind of I've gone over a threshold where it's like quite difficult to come back. Okay. Because mm. it's been. I think it's been like four or five years since I've mm -hmm. doobie dooed, doobie done. <laughs> you can tell how far gone he is by, yeah. because he's done. using that vernacular <laughs> yeah, to describe indeed. drugs. Um, <laughs> so no, we didn't do that. Didn't go to the red light district because no. um, we're only in Amsterdam for a day. So, mm, okay. uh, and then we went to the nice city, city question mark. Yeah, city of Leiden, which is just mm. south of Amsterdam. You get any cheese? No, of course you didn't. That's no, but question. there was loads of cheese. Yeah. There were cheese shops that were just walls and walls of wheels of cheese. It was like oh, an oblivion oh glitch. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I want to great. go to there. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad you had a lovely time. Thanks. There's all sorts happening in the video game world, isn't there, since we've yeah. been Yeah. You good, Ashton? Yes. How are tired you? Tired today. Tired, tired a bit, but mm. I'm all right. Mm. Good. Happy to hear that. I'm also okay. I'm great. going to a good. wedding this weekend. I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Should be a nice time. Wonderful. Shall I'm feeding Ben's cat. Ah, this you're feeding weekend. my cat. Yes, you are. You get to hang out with Pippa. I do. For a sh you don't you don't have to stay there for very I'll long. Hang out you a just bit. throw some food. Just maybe not. Just maybe not in the morning before weekend. work. No, probably but, not. That but maybe on Saturday morning Saturday she might morning. get a little a little hangout. Have some sesh. playtime. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, that'll be good. I'm mm. looking looking forward to hearing from Pippa about what an amazing yeah. time she had. Mm -hmm. Having a holiday. She might. I don't make her have too good of a time because then she might not want. She'll be upset that. You've come home. Well, she's usually upset you know? that I've come home anyway most <laughs> days, so that won't really be out of the norm. Yeah. But, uh, if Amy goes to a wedding or something, sees some friends, can you come around and just hang out with me for a bit? <laughs> okay, I can do that. <laughs> Go and feed yeah, Peter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How weird. <laughs> Uh, we are sponsored each and every week by a very real video game adjacent sponsor. Helps us keep the still single bulb on in this studio. Any sign of him, Peter? Do you see? I him? always think that's him, but it's not. It's a bit of, it's a bit of yeah. crud. Yeah. Um, he'll come back soon. Yeah, he will, he'll, as he'll the seasons change. Soon. Yeah. I had my first um, bug in a while fly into my face while I was cycling oh, yeah. uh, earlier this week. So it's happening. The seasons are changing. They're coming. Mm. Get ready. Uh, but actually, Peter, I believe you have the ad read in front of you, don't I you? I do. For this, for this video game sponsor. Yeah, there's a game that's it's actually coming out today at time of recording. Oh. Um, right. uh, it's by Kepler Interactive, and it's about uh, you You get in a car, mm. um, and you're, you know when your dad says, oh, what route are you taking? And you're just like... I don't know. I'm going to just put just it in the, the sat road. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So you're going to take the, the A3569 or mm. are you going to take the A42345? Uh, valid question. Mm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know, dad and or mum. And uh, dad and mum is like, look, let's let's work this out. <laughs> and the game is mm. uh, your, your parent yes. opens the map and says, this is the way you need to go. This is the specific drive yeah, yeah. Okay. okay yeah cool <laughs> <laughs> that's it what do you do in specific drive it's just There's no you, driving you just plan the oh. route you just plan the route so it's like when you used to be able to get um like games for your psp or or, or even your playstation 2 yes. it was like it was just a map mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but on a umd disc or something it served no real purpose it was just a digital map that yeah. you could access that's it that's kind of what it it's is. an older relative at it's least one software. generation above yeah uh -huh. sitting with an a to z saying go this way and that service station is a good one mm -hmm. and they say things like that <laughs> okay yeah um, and you have to make notes on it like which service stations have got like uh, KFC, mm -hmm. right? Or like, which ones have only just got like a Starbucks? They say stuff that only dads or others know. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, that'll take you. You'll do. You'll go around the bypass of this town that's called, you know, 
yeah. Fudgeton or whatever. You and get to they, avoid the Fudgeton. Yeah. Traffic. And did you know that there used to be a really big Ford factory in Fudgeton? And you're like, what? Like, yeah. In the 1980s, they had there was like a big steel industry, and oh, they had a Ford factory. In Fudgeton. In yeah. Fudgeton. Like, oh, Do they occasionally interrupt right. their stories by going, break, yeah. break, mm. break, and and you hear sort of the sound of someone attempting to break in yeah. the passenger seat, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, or like yeah, hanging yeah. on to the the mother-in-law handle mm. that's yeah. on the side yeah. of the car. Sounds great. Yeah. Specific drive. Specific drive. And if you go the wrong way, what happens then? Is it like a Stanley? There's Parable no driving though. I no? think you're oh, maybe okay. you don't get the brake break thing because oh, right. it's just about planning the route. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow. But maybe he's still just he's for for future yes. before you've set off. He does just go break break just, while you're yeah. sitting just to in, give you that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. give, that's good. That's yeah. nice. An authentic experience. Mm. Uh, and it's now? not real. Oh, okay. Oh, think. dang oh, it. It's a yeah. shame. Uh, no, we're not sponsored by Specific Drive. We're sponsored by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. If you go there and support us, you get access to all sorts of wonderful rewards like submitting questions for this podcast, early access to worst and weirdest games ever, and exclusive access to episodes of Rules Boss and Main Menu. Tons of stuff. Mm. Uh, what else have I got to say here? Triplej.mup, that's our website. That's where you can find links to our YouTube, our Twitch, if you want to join our Discord, get a cameo message from one of us. Triplejumpshop.com. We have the samples. We do. We do. We have the merch samples. It's happening. If we have time today, we will be shooting just a little something, a little a little ad thing. Come and on. then we can kind of just go whenever. Yeah. Um, I think we're planning on doing it next week. Time, yeah, time of release next this this coming week, um, but it's all ready to go. Pretty Save much. Save up those pennies. One of the items will be pre-order only, and if you're a fan of Triple Jump, you're gonna want to pay attention to the merch announcement because mm. once it's gone, it's gone. Yes. Uh, we've also got patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. I already said that. Quiet week outside of our regular content. And after dark went out on the Monday just gone for uh, patrons of the appropriate tier. That's our bonus podcast where we talk about everything not video game related and we can do swears and stuff. So go and check that out mm -hmm. if you support us on Patreon at that tier. Shall we crack on with yes. question one? We've got a question here from Richard Major who says, the PS5 is entering, quote, the latter stage of its life cycle, according to Sony, whatever that even means. Whilst this is certainly still still too early to really say, what do you think the PS5's legacy will be? Personally, I'll remember the PS5 as having an excellent controller, but basically all the games being remakes of PS2 slash 3 games or actually just being PS4 games. Thank you, Richard Major. I've got the quote here. According to This is written by IGN, but they're saying, according to Bloomberg, Sony Senior Vice President Naomi Matsuoka said the company now expects the, uh, the uh, sales pace of the PS5 to start falling from the next fiscal year, which begins April 2024 and runs until the end of March 25. This is the quote. Looking ahead, PS5 will enter the latter stage of its life cycle. As such, we'll put more emphasis on the balance between profitability and sales. For this reason, we expect the annual sales of PS5 hardware will start falling from the next fiscal year. So Richard Major says, whatever that means. I think really what it means is they've, they're have they saying they've, they've sort of peaked. Yeah. Sales have peaked. Um, so it's not necessarily saying anything more than that. Um, but, I mean, if we go by the average sort of time gap between one generation and the next going going back through the playstation's history it's in the in the first couple of consoles it was six years since then it's been every seven years mm -hmm. um and so if we're going by that as a rule of thumb we're looking at maybe 2027 for the ps6 so seemingly still some years left before we really start thinking about the ps6 um but to answer the question I agree with Richard Major in that I do love the controller, actually. That mm -hmm. is one thing I, I wouldn't have thought of immediately. But yeah, I think it's a great controller. Um, but also the thing that I will take away, the thing I'm taking away at the moment, but clearly we've still got some years left, is that the PS5 does have a lot of its games out on PS4, or yeah. it has done until recently. Mm -hmm. Even some of the biggest games of the console so far you, your God of War Ragnarok and your Horizon Forbidden West to speak only of first party stuff um, was on PS4 mm -hmm. uh, and they're as recent as 2022. I think 2023 was when it really started to be like, okay, now like stuff really is kind of just current gen and, and it's not it's not sort of cross-generational. So I think we're now finally moving away from that. Um, but yeah, it's certainly the thing that has been, I think, 
quite a, a significant part or a, a sort of a noticeable thing in uh, with the with the PS5 is that mm. oh you could also play this on on PS4 and is that holding back the quality of this game? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes it is. Yeah, <laughs> I think that yeah I agree, but I also do think that that's potentially an industry wide problem. Yeah, not necessarily just PlayStation Five, but it definitely has fallen victim to it. I think it'll be the console that never really got the opportunity to shine in the sense of like everyone was so worried about selling all these games that we never really got many games that are just designed for the PlayStation 5 and with the PlayStation 5 in mind. Um, I don't know if we ever got to see it reach its full potential. And this is obviously not dying. We're going to have a few more years of this now, Um, though we're not getting any games for it for the next like 12 months. (laughs) So, you know don't know what that's about um but yeah i think it never really got a chance to shine i think that it is i like that you can customize the side plates mm-hmm. yeah i think it will always be remembered as the monolith the out monolith to the playstation 3 yeah mm-hmm. um and i like the controller as well but yeah i just think it never got the opportunity to reach its full potential and i think that's probably one of the main issues with the playstation 5 and probably one of the reasons with a lot of the the ge- one of the main issues with a lot of the games that came out for it was that they never were designed with the PlayStation 5 in mind. They were designed to run on a PlayStation 4 and then be boosted to run on a PlayStation 5 yeah. better. They weren't designed to push the PlayStation 5 as far as it could be because otherwise it wouldn't run on a PlayStation 4. So, yeah, I think that there's a lot of overlap between the PlayStation 5 and 4 life cycles. Um so yeah, that's why I think its legacy will be. I wonder how much that was influenced by the like lack of avail- availability of PS5s in the early days. Yeah, whether probably. like developers thought or, or Sony thought, oh, we need to make sure that people can play this, and if they haven't yeah. got a PS5, we need to make sure it's also playable on PS4. Yeah, yeah no, probably. They're still so expensive as well. Mm. Yes, they've yeah. just not seen any kind of drop off in the price point. There've mm-hmm. been a couple of deals over the years. We've got like the the slimmer one now. That's the same price mm-hmm. as the original. In fact, the price went up, didn't it? At yeah. one point. Oh, yeah, it did. Which is yeah. bonkers. We're due a uh, sort of like half generation, b- more powerful version, a pro version at some point, uh, which might do something cool. I don't know. But as someone who had the PS4 Pro before the PS5 came out, mm. yes, obviously, if you compare the game side by side, they're going to look better and run better on the PlayStation 5 versus a PS4 Pro. But when I was playing games there and I had the choice, I was given the choice between 60 frames per second or, you know, 4K, but not both. Mm. I was really hoping, I think a lot of people are quite disappointed, myself included, that we're still having to choose between Mm -hmm. quality and performance mode. That doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Why is that? What's the whole point of this generation then if that's not what it's for? Um, I think it's it's difficult to know while we're in it. I think it'll be way easier to look back at the legacy when we're when we're yeah. out of this generation, yeah. especially as we're probably not even halfway through it at, the, at this point. Um, but it it just feels like a, a safe, steady generation. Mm. Mm-hmm. No real risks taken. Yeah, you can do some colorful flap stuff to the PS5, but the UI's not really changed at all. Um, it doesn't really... I know the passage of time feels like it's flowed really fast since lockdown and stuff, but it's shocking to me that we're already talking about the latter stage of the life me cycle. Me too, yeah. Although it does make sense because it has been nearly four years, mm-hmm. but even so, it's just like in that four years, it doesn't really feel like anything's happened. There have been some huge games, but as Richard Major pointed out, a lot of them are remakes or sequels. In fact, I had a little look at the list of exclusives for PS5, and if you discount games that have that also came out on Steam or have since come out on Steam were on PS4 uh, and aren't a sequel or a remake, you've got Astro's Playroom and Destruction All-Stars. Those oh, yeah. are the, the two original exclusives that are not sequels or remakes yeah. on the PlayStation 5. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of shocking to think about. These games are getting, they're coming around less and less frequently. As you said, Ashton, we're not going to get another one in the, in the next year, yeah. apparently. Yeah. And also, as we've still got a lot of this generation left to go, it could well be that this generation becomes defined by PlayStation's push into live service, especially with the Mm. success of Helldivers. It may be just all steam ahead now. Who's to say? But that is looking at it through a very critical lens 
because when you go back and look at like the PS2, a lot of the games associated with that era were multi-platform. When people think of San yeah. Andreas, a lot of people think PS2. It wasn't an exclusive game. Mm-hmm. Um, and it could well be that we come out of this generation and think, oh, remember all those amazing third-party games that released on, yeah. on PS5 and other consoles and were great. And they defined that era. You know, GTA V somehow still managed, Fortnite defining the mm-hmm. PlayStation 5. It's difficult to say at this point, but certainly to me, it just feels really safe. I've had no issues with my PS5. No. I've not had to replace it. It's never shut down. It's just, it just plays games and I have to choose if I want them in 4K or in 60 frames. And that feels yeah. a bit crap. Mm-hmm. No, I do miss though. Go on. Themes. Themes, yeah. exactly. That's I what I mean I wish I could have a home screen, home screen theme. And folders. folders. Proper folders. folders. Yeah, I thought that yeah. was just a, a launch issue that they were like, oh yeah, we, like, we'll add these in like six months. Yeah. Or whatever. And they never did. Yeah. Um, Traditionally, most consoles it didn't happen so much with the uh the one and the ps4 and i don't think it's happened at all with the switch but they have like a, a huge ui overhaul at some point yeah. or like they had a load of new features we've not seen anything we've been able to turn down the beep volume yeah of the ps5 when you turn it on and very exciting in the new update i'm on the beta for it at the moment you can change the brightness of the lights around the, the ps5 light. yeah wow. yeah yeah, like the power indicator. The it's a huge game changer. And also there's a slightly different screen when you shut it down and put it into rest mode. Mm-hmm. But that's it. It's got, we need some, we don't, here's the thing, right? We don't need anything. Mm. It no. kind of just does what it's it does. It's doing it, yeah. But it, it's, it would be nice to have some sort of shakeup, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a console without a personality. Without a soul. Without a soul. <laughs> and is it is this a bad sign in terms of the likelihood of a shakeup? If if Sony is saying like, okay, we're on the sort of the second half now of of this console's life cycle, we're probably going to see a drop in sales. Are they going to be even less invested in like doing Absolutely. anything spicy and interesting mm, to it? It's just like no problems we'll with just, it. We'll just yeah, we'll run it, run it for a few more years, PS6 eventually. That's where we'll we'll focus all of our innovation now. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Stay the course. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that this pro actually lets us have our cake and eat it with mm-hmm. frame rate and uh, yeah, and and visuals because there's feels like that should be the entire point of this mm-hmm. generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, making it look as good as possible and run as good as possible. Yeah, you shouldn't have to make a choice. Come on. Yeah. And sometimes performance mode isn't even sixty frames. Yeah. yeah. Or sometimes, like with Jedi Survivor, one <laughs> one mode runs the game and the other mode doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Performance mode just means it runs. It runs. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God help you if you want visuals only. Yeah. Uh, well, there we are. It's time to move on to a section. We actually started this last yeah, week. Yeah, we tried it last here, week. Peter. Okay. Um, while you were on holiday, because we thought maybe we'll test it out, see if we liked it, and then introduce it to you um, later on. Did it go well? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, it's called What We Play In. Right. <laughs> It's what we're playing time. Time to talk about what we've been playing. Peter, Mm. what have you been playing? Well, I played a little bit more Loco Roco before I went away. Mm. Then I went away. Mm -hmm. Then the day after we got back, uh, we did a little family um, Jackbox. Oh, we did. Uh, But I really need to invest in more Jackbox packs. I came to the rescue, actually. (laughs) We we had another go at the game that I talked about, the mobile game that was Mm -hmm. just... You know, it's not enforcing its own rules, this yeah, board yeah, game. Yeah. Yeah. We realized that. A trust system. A trust system that we didn't realize till later on. And we're like, oh, should we just do it like when when we come back from the Netherlands? We're like, yeah, okay. And we couldn't like connect to any servers. And it was, it was just not working at all. It was rubbish. And I went, hey, family, I have a thing. Uh, and so me and Amy whipped out... Um, Jackbox, but I've only got pack one and five, and five actually is not that good, I don't think. So fortunately, these we're we're talking um uh it's my my parents in law we're talking about here and siblings in law, and they hadn't played any jackbox. I think one of the siblings had, but the parents hadn't. And so you can whip out basic bish pack one mm-hmm. and they can be really impressed and have a great time right yes. so we had a good time we played um uh drawful and fibbage uh and then uh that was it and so now between now and maybe next week when we do it again because i think it's becoming a weekly thing i might have to finally invest in some more packs mm-hmm. um so that was that um i meant to also last night start tomb raider but i didn't because the, some new star Wars was out so i just watched that <laughs> um but uh, yeah, so that's all I've played, really, given that I've, I've 
I've had sort of four or five days away. Bit of bit of lock rock and uh, and Jackbox. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Ashton, what have you been playing? I've played some more Baldur's Gate three. I know I say this every week for the last. Yeah. Like, Still four not weeks. bloody finished it. Well, we keep every time we get close to finishing it. Another thing is put in front of us, and we do that quest instead. Got to do the thing. Um, but this weekend, I promise, as of Saturday, we only have the final quest left to do now. Okay. Okay. Everything else is ticked off. Everything else is done. All the companion quests are finished. It's just, just, just the main quest now that we have to do. So I think this weekend I might finally finish it. It's only been three months since I started it, but it's happening. You're still enjoying it? Yes, Good. I am. Yeah, I still Good. really like that game. Um, I have played some more Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden. And the other thing I have played, um, which we got sent a code for, so thanks so much, uh, was Mario versus Donkey Kong, mm. which is the remake of the Game Boy Advance um, Mario versus Donkey Kong game. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little puzzler. I think that this one's one of those games which is like, like in every way, perfect for the Switch. Like you can pick it up, play one puzzle, and then put it down. You can like pick it up for a while, play a bunch of puzzles, and then put it down. Like it's a really just like, because it, everything's very condensed. Like I streamed it this week for two hours and I did 23 puzzles. Wow. Um, there's a lot of puzzles as well. Um, but yeah, you basically for six of every, so the world has eight levels. Mm -hmm. For six levels, you're collecting your little mini Marios um, that are in like Pokeballs. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're in, you know, um, those those like toy machines where you put like a mm -hmm. 10p in and you spin it in a yeah. couple of capsules. They're all in little mm -hmm. capsules. Um, and then one level is trying to get them to to guide them to the end of that level. Okay. But most of the time it's just like collect the word toy and then put them in the box. And then everyone has a um, Donkey Kong boss fight type situation where it uses the mechanics you've learned in the other six areas in the world. And then if you lose any of your little mates, well, if you get hit, you sacrifice one of your little oh, no. friends. Oh, no. And if you lose any of them, you don't get a perfect star. Um, and I've been getting perfect stars in all of them. Of course you have. Wow. Because I have to, mm -hmm. because the stars make me feel happy. <laughs> um, this game, I I got confused because I've played the DS version of Mario versus Donkey Kong. I think it's called March of the Minis. And that one is way more like a Lemmings type situation. You play as the minis for the majority of the game. Mm -hmm. Whereas this version of the game, you play as Mario for the majority of the game and you are collecting minis for this one level in each world. So I was a bit confused when I first started. I was like, where is all the mini levels? Like, is there only, is there only one every world? That's really strange. But yeah, that's basically how the Game Boy Advance version played. Mm. But having only played the DS version, I was surprised mm. that that was the case. Right. Um, but yeah, it's a good game. It looks pretty good. They have like an opening cutscene of Donkey Kong going and stealing all of the mini Marios from the shop because he can't find them. No, it goes to the factory because the shops it goes are straight all, to the factory because all the shops are sold out. Wow! And he really wants a mini Mario. Um, that's Why? Because they go, it's a me. I mean, I would want one. one. You'd think he'd that. be able, if anyone's going to be able to get a mini Mario, it would be him because it's yeah. you know surely he's, licensed he's the guy. to him. Donkey Kong's yeah. the guy. You'd think he would get yeah. sent like a, a box of yeah. a box of them a to press give away to his fans. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, you'd think so, but he doesn't. So he goes and robs the factory, and Mario doesn't appreciate corporate espionage, I guess, or theft, and he chases Mario uh, Donkey Kong through about 10 worlds mm. just to get some mini Marios back. Oh. I think maybe Big Mario needs to get a life a little bit and just leave Donkey Kong to have his mini Marios yeah, because he just wants to hang out with them. Yeah, he's, he's Donkey Kong's a colleague. Yeah, surely. exactly. You're all under the Nintendo mm. banner. Yeah. During the stream this week, I kept calling him Bowser. By <laughs> oh, no. And I was like, no, I know it's Can't not Bowser. That. Um, but yeah, that's a good little game. And if you're looking for a Switch game that's a puzzler, then yeah, mm. pretty easy as well. So kids can play it. Fantastic. Per ASA like guidelines. Like me. <laughs> per ASA guidelines, we have to disclose that that code was gifted, as you said. Yes. Mm -hmm. So technically, this is now an ad. However, there was no financial compensation in exchange for coverage. We were just given a code. They did send us a puzzle, though. They did send a us a physical puzzle, puzzle mm. which we and put up on social media. And a slidey puzzle, which me and Kieran keep passing back and forth. Yeah. Messing it up and then 
Ruining one of us solves it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. That's yeah. a fun little game. Thank you, Nintendo. That's all I've played this week. I played a few things. Mm -hmm. Shocking. What do you mean? You always play a few. Things. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Because I like games. I know you do. <laughs> so, I'm, so that's what I'm going to do. I've played Shocking. some Shocking. FC24, EA Sports Football Club, Football Club FC. It's and not why have you FIFA done that? 24. It's not FIFA, but it is FIFA. Mm. I've done that because I had a friend visit and he had it. And, he, and we usually play some FIFA when, when we right. hang out. So we start like a Champions League tournament with a rubbish team mm. and then just get unreasonably cross about how the game it feels like the game is artificially making it way too difficult like we play on a high high difficulty but mm. then these players who are not rated very highly it feels like are, are would not behave like anyone who plays professional football would mm. like they they feel like they're running through treacle mm. they're really like stupidly slow they make absurd mistakes all the time and then anyone you play against who's even just a little bit better is basically just a world like a world <laughs> uh what am i trying to say world class world class footballer mm -hmm. yeah it's it's it really does show it, it's not how you're meant to play fifa really but it, it really shows sort of how how the game's constructed when you play it that way when you are playing as a crap team because it's like that doesn't it's not about skill anymore. It's about luck. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. about RNG and but whether or not the keeper's going to stop. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's crap. Mm. Uh, but I had a decent enough time playing it. It looks, you know, visually it looks fantastic. It's come a long way from, you know, the FIFA games of old. All of the little tweaks, the, the ringside cameras and stuff, the little cutscenes before the matches and, mm -hmm. you know, idle ringside, animations. Ringside, that's things. the slip there. Ringside, yeah, mode. whoops. Uh, pitch pitch side mm. uh so i didn't even notice i was like yes ringside cameras they play football, football in rings yeah, yeah the yeah, big yeah. square <laughs> rectangle ring anyway yeah so i played a bit of that i played some tekken 8 oh did you i'm bad at it but it is fun isn't it yeah it's really fun very yeah. flashy and very stupid mm -hmm. and uh, i played some of that i've just remembered something Go i on. have played that something you carry on and i'll tell you about it in a minute okay cool uh there's a beach ball game isn't there yeah where you hit a beach ball back and forth but you have to like do moves to the beach ball mm -hmm. so you have to sort of volley it otherwise you get smacked in the face and lose some yeah lose some health that was fun mm -hmm. i enjoyed that yeah i also saw some of that weird like arcade bit where you make yeah. a little me version of yourself mm -hmm. and walk that's weird really weird <laughs> it's a really weird thing. yeah i don't know if they announced that ad of, they probably did like i wasn't following it that closely but mm. that really took me by surprise mm -hmm. like i was not ready for that Bizarre. it wasn't in any of the trailers no it wasn't in the trailers certainly <laughs> imagine if the, all these intense trailers for tekken 8 and then there's just a weird <laughs> a cartoon man yeah bobbling about playing, <laughs> playing tekken uh hell divers 2 I played some of that. Mm -hmm. Fun. It's really fun. Did you actually get into a game? Yes, I did. Yeah, <laughs> I actually did. I haven't. I mean, I haven't been playing it a lot, but I have played it. I've, I've played like maybe ten matches. Really fun. It's not immediately obvious like how everything works. You go through a training mission, but I think that's part of the fun because it's meant. I mean, I'm sure you've seen loads of clips. But it is meant to be chaotic and and mad. Like you do get overwhelmed by loads of people, and when your friendly fire is on, so yeah. you accidentally kill each other all the time. <laughs> and when you want to, they're called stratagems or stratagems, which are basically any kind of like bonus power that you want to activate yeah. going in. So it'll be like calling an airstrike, calling reinforcements. So if one of your allies gets killed, they don't, they can't just redeploy immediately. One of you has to call in a thing to bring them back down. Right. Or if you want like a resupply, like some more ammo or call in a special weapon, like a like a machine gun that's way more powerful and stuff like that, then you have to, you will eventually, I imagine if you play it enough, learn these inputs off by heart, but you have to hold L1 to bring up a sub menu all in real time. It says the name of the thing that you want, say airstrike. Mm. And then you have to press directional buttons in like a certain order. To, to, oh. So you're like, someone, one of your teammates has been killed by you, probably. Loads of robots are marching towards you. And you're like desperately sprinting, like double tapping circle to dive off cliffs into cover and stuff. While like, beep boop, beep boop, like putting in these buttons <laughs> wrong. Like, oh God, I'm just trying to get, it like really adds to mm. the, it's, it's like intentionally quite cumbersome mm. to, yeah. to make it more stressful in a way that it's actually not that hard. But when you're in a stressful situation, it just makes it more intense and funny mm. and fun. Mm. And the whole democracy at any cost 
sort of uh, narrative that they push is really funny. Mm-hmm. So when you're waiting, it says, please, please wait democratically. Right. Uh, you go on the in-game shop, which is really generous. I know it's been heavily publicized, really generous with like not nickel and dime you. Mm-hmm. Like it's really good. And there are fake user reviews under some of the items that you can get. And they're all five stars. Like <laughs> bought this for my husband. He loves it. Um, you know, fought so democratically with this weapon. And then there's occasionally you'll see a one star review and it says redacted uh, being investigated for, you know, violating mm. freedom mm-hmm. or something yeah. like that. It's just... It's just a really fun, well put together co-op game. And it genuinely doesn't matter if you're playing with friends or not. Mm-hmm. But I have played with friends, ad- admittedly only one at a time and then two randoms. But like this is the this is the kind of sort of service type game that I could really get behind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's not I, I have increasingly fallen out of love with uh, sort of PvP multiplayer games because I'm just I just don't have the time to dedicate to get good at them. Yeah. Whereas at the very least, in a co-op game where you're facing you know CPUs and AI, and the way that they they generate the missions, it's just and they incentivize it really well with a very generous battle pass that's free and stuff like that. And you're always grinding for like the next weapon or the, you know being able to call in a more powerful airstrike mm-hmm. or what have you and change your armor up and things like that. I get it. Like, it's just really fun. Mm -hmm. And I am slightly concerned, as I said earlier, that the success, the monumental success of this, the unprecedented success of this is going to push Sony even more towards scrapping all their single player narrative stuff and focusing purely on this. Yeah. And they're not all going to be hits. No. Mm -hmm. And maybe not just Sony as well. Just other people generally might look at at live service doing well or Helldivers doing well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We Let's, can do that. We'll do that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's also gorgeous and it runs really well. Like when you're raining down airstrikes and it's just chaos and everything is exploding, it's just really good. Mm-hmm. Really, really good. Um, big fan of that. I completely, like a lot of people, wrote it off before mm-hmm. it came out. Yeah, and I'm so glad that it's great, and I'm so glad I played it. The final thing that I have been putting all of my time into is a game that I am not allowed to talk about, which is a huge tease. But uh, I have played about 21 hours of it, mm-hmm. and I will talk about it. Next week. Mm-hmm. What was the other thing, Ashton? I went to a, an arcade this oh. week. Oh. I forgot uh, because it was on Saturday and that feels like such a long time ago now. Uh, it was date night and we went to Four Quarters, which is a second arcade bar in Newcastle. Oh. Different to the one we've been to before. Is it new? Is it new? Um, I think it is. It's not that new. It's been around for like a year or so at least. Okay. Um, but it's really, it's quite good. And I played some Guitar Hero. Man, I suck at that, but I had a great time. <laughs> um, we played some Mortal Kombat. I think it was one. I'm not sure. It was a Mortal Kombat. I just got my ass kicked mm-hmm. straight away by Ben. And then <laughs> um, he died in the next round. We played some House of the Dead 2. Those games are just brilliant, aren't mm-hmm. they? They're mm-hmm. just the way they talk to you, they're like, help me. Help. And it's I'm like, time to stop run the chaos away. in the city. Move away from the zombies, idiot woman. Um, and then we also played some Sega Rally. Mm. Um, Were you and, sitting in a... With the buckets yeah, in yeah, and yeah. everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good stuff. And I played like four rounds of pinball as well. Got really pinball. into the pinball machine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was Deadpool themed pinball. Yeah. I don't ever really know what I'm doing in pinball. Like I know you go get the ball to not go down the hole. Yeah. But then there's like things going on on the screen. And I'm like, I'm confused. There's like a movie playing and it's like, press this button. And I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Um, but yeah, I played those games. This nice. Week. Is it more or less expensive than NQ64? Because NQ64 expensive. in every city is so expensive. Less expensive, I think. That's good. Um, okay. You get like 15 quarters for seven pounds. Okay. And then and how much are the drinks? The drinks are like, well, they, have, they had like a two for one all night. Okay. And I think it, they were like £12 for a 2 Do they drinks. serve a blue triple jump, though, is the question. They don't serve very a blue true. triple jump, no. Um, so the problem with these nerd bars is that they cost a... The drinks are disgustingly expensive. But it's just because it's a cocktail expensive. bar. Like, well, every, every cocktail bar will cost like £12. But you can mm. still get like a beer in them and they cost a fortune. Yeah. It's just, it's so expensive. Also, mm. it's like underground, so there's like no signal down there. Uh, wow, you really go into the bunker then. You do. Lovely. I guess there's a lot of upkeep for the arcades and stuff. But yeah, like, yeah. You know, it's I still, it. yeah. It just makes me not want to go. It was a bit cheaper, I would I've yeah. still got like 10 well, NQ64 they they had a, um, They had a cocktail named after a porn star 
It's a porn star martini, but it was named um, Riley Reed, which is a porn star. Okay, right. And I said to my boyfriend, that's named after a porn star. And he was like, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, how do you know? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Just a big fan of work. It's, it's fine. Um, Should yeah. we move on? Yeah, slap. Question mm-hmm. two. It's question two now. It comes from Captain Cone. What do you guys think about the new Borderlands trailer? Here we go. And what do you think took, and why do you think it took so long for it to come out? Thank, Thank you, you, Captain, Captain Cone. Thank you, Captain Cone. Um, Thank you for your service. And we didn't we didn't salute Major Richard either at the start. Uh, True. Sorry. Oopsie. Sorry, yeah. Richard. Well, uh, <laughs> it's got a good cast. Yeah. I mean, that's not the trailer, is it? That's just the film. The, the cast is is good and impressive. I don't know how they've afforded the cast. No, I don't. Um, I think visually it, it looked all right. It, well, this is the thing. I don't know if I was expecting anything sort of like the, the the style, the Borderlands visual style, like the inking or, or something along those lines. You don't necessarily have to like literally make everything look inked or cell shaded or anything like that. Mm. But there, there are films that just have certain like color grading or mm-hmm. like saturation or stuff that that alone can make something look almost comic booky or like something like that. And this... Although it's very bright and colorful, it just looks like various other bright and colorful sci-fi or action movies. We've looked seen. a yeah. bit cosplay at times. Yeah, it yeah, did. A it bit. did. Um, and I'm not the the best judge for whether they've captured these characters properly, given that I'm not really a Borderlands player. But I am sort of vaguely aware of some of the characters, having just worked in this industry for a while. Um, certainly, Tiny Tina, I, I wasn't really no. sure about at all and that's the one that i think kieran picked up on in, in our chat he, yeah. he mentioned that and she just she just seems like a sort of a teenage a girl child. a teenage girl yeah yeah um which i mean is would be fine as a character in in an original piece like i don't think that like that character and that portrayal is like actively bad but it's not true to the source material which is what we're dealing with here you know if you're adapting something maybe you should be working more on on trying to match that um but yeah, I mean, those are my initial thoughts is that I just think it, as as a non-Borderlands thing, mm. it's got a good cast and it, it looks quite good in terms of the CG. Um, but when you when you say, but this is a Borderlands film, mm. I'm not sure about that. And then also, you know, you, you look at like the, the development of this film and you have to start to worry, like, how good is this going to be? I don't think there was anything obvious in the trailer that said this is going to be bad. You know, some trailers, particularly in the past few years, have come out and you've already known the film. What's the Madam Web quote? Yeah. Um, st- my my mother died in the rainforest when she was researching spiders right before I was born. Yeah. So good. It's really good. Really good writing. Um, that was the, the one I was thinking of, in <laughs> fact. Uh, but yeah. So sometimes Did you see that they took the piss out of that in yeah. the promo stuff? I saw that someone uh, asked her in an interview. They said like, oh, what do you think about the fact that that line has been memed? And she was like, what? What are you talking about? No. But mm. Borderlands, the movie promo had they took the piss out of that. Oh line. On yeah, Twitter. yeah, on Twitter they made like right. a thing like meet the characters, and it was like Kevin Hart is Roland, and then Roland's quote was, "My mother died in the rainforest researching spiders before I was born." I mean, people. Yeah. Let's be quite frank here. People in glass houses shouldn't, yeah. shouldn't really be done yeah. because I have. We'll talk about it in a second. I have very little faith. This is going to be good. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know how I know. Particularly that it's from, I think, the same production company. Citation Do you know agent. how I know that Go it's on. not going to be good? Go on. Because it's produced by the same people that did the Uncharted movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when that came up, I was like. Uh, it was also uh, one of the writers, I think, and there have been a few, uh, or uh, where is it? Yes, it part of the rewrites were done by the guy who did Space Jam: A New Legacy, which uh, didn't mm-hmm. go down particularly well. Um, and I'm sure there was Isn't another. It the Hangover two parts two and three was written by. Well, Craig yeah, Craig possibly. Mazin Craig Mazin apparently wrote it originally in, originally yeah. and then had his name removed from it after reshoots yeah. hilarious i've got a whole i can tell you the the story of development when we get to that but yeah going off the trailer if it wasn't a borderlands film i might look at that and think eh, okay maybe but when you add in the fact that it's supposed to be a borderlands adaptation and it's had a very troubled development cycle mm. i am concerned but I, there was nothing in it that i looked at and thought that looks like a bad film mm. based on that actual footage yeah madam webb is from a different studio Right. Here's the thing. Here are the things I liked about the trailer. Go on. Moxie. 
Yes. She looked great. I liked all the way the psychos looked. Mm -hmm. I liked how colorful things were. Mm -hmm. I liked that they've got Commander... Oh, what was that flipping name? Mm -hmm. It's just Steel. That's cool. Like okay. that she's in it. Here's the things I didn't like about it. Um, there's this just normal man. There's just a normal man. Just innocent man. Just a normal innocent man. Where he, at, oh, he's yeah, playing villain. Atlas. He's playing. And everyone else is like, you know, super, not super stylized, but they've all got like kind of the same theme outfit. And then he's just a guy in a suit. Yeah. He's like, kill them all. And I'm like, who's this? No who is this normal man? <laughs> Who is he? Where did he come from? Why is he on this space planet being a normal man? Um, I didn't like that they made a pee joke and a poo joke. Um, oh, see, I thought that was the best bit of the trailer. I, my sides were split. Were they? Yeah. Cackling you Guts were. all over the floor. Bereft of ribs. <laughs> Gasping for air. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I thought that like, it just felt really watered down. Mm. It just felt like this is this is the humor. They were like, you think, if you like Borderlands humor, you love piss and poo. Mm. You love pee yeah. and poo. Love it. Love it's it. my favorite. Um, yeah, interesting. I didn't love Jack Black's Claptrap. Mm. Um, I think that it's crazy that you've already had two actors play Claptrap and yeah. then you couldn't get either of them to mm. be in the movie. I love Jack Black. I am open to, to you know, being proved wrong. I don't think I'm going to be, though. I couldn't even hear hear him doing, like, really a Claptrap voice. No. They just put a Claptrap effect yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, I hate, hate Lilith's hair. I think it looks ridiculous. <laughs> Kate Blanchett is so hot and I don't know what they've done for that hair, but it's <laughs> terrible. It's the worst wig I've ever seen. Um, Tannis, mm. played by Jamie Lee Curtis, had about as much personality as a spoon. Um, at one point she says, I needed a gun. Yeah, that was one thing that I thought, what? Was, what? He, she stole, she steals Kevin Hart's Roland's gun mm -hmm. and he goes, what did you do that for? I needed a gun. Then ask. Then ask. That was it. Yeah. That was the exchange. It was and funny. It was funny. It was funny. It's funny. It was funny. It was funny. Really. It was funny. Um, it's just so yeah. not Borderlands. Yeah. It? Yeah. It just, none of it when was you like. See her, when you meet her for the first time in Borderlands 3, she crawls out of an alien that's on in, an operating yeah, table yeah, yeah. in her like yeah. lab. She just slides out of it. She's such an interesting character and she's so mental. quirky and yeah. so mental. Like, even the way she speaks is really interesting. And I just got like none of that from Tannis. No. But to be honest, I got none of that from any of the characters mm -hmm. in, the, in the trailer. I know it's only a trailer. I will go and see the movie yep. because I, and we'll make a, we'll make a big deal about it. And I'm sure we'll do the same thing we did with this movie as we did with the Uncharted movie. Yeah. We'll sit and we'll talk about it for like 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, it just felt bland. Like it looked all right, visually seemed fine. We didn't even hear Krieg speak once. He was just in the background shots doing this. I imagine he'll be dubbed, right? Probably. Probably. Because mm, I think the guy playing him is German. Mm. Oh, I know. Isn't his name like? I think he's Spanish. I'm pretty sure he's German. Is he? Yeah. I thought he was Spanish. I think so because I looked him up earlier. Oh, okay. Mm, I think he was German. Okay. Also, one other thing I meant to say: they really, really wanted to. Uh, they basically want. I felt like they wanted to use Fox on the Run and felt like we can't. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's they a just song picked that so yellow similar. song instead. Yeah. They're like, oh, this is what we should do. Someone sat down in a room and said, mm. what we want to do is make Guardians of the Galaxy, yes. but it's Borderlands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And exactly. then they cut the trailer together. Wow, that, that was, probably did get picked up on the microphone. Was that was that That's Randy Pitchford? <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> Shut yeah. up. They wanted Jesus, to make Guardians, train. and the trailer they wanted it to look like Guardians, and so they picked the most Guardians of the Galaxy song that yeah. hadn't been used mm -hmm. in the Guardians mm -hmm. films, and that's what yeah. I One agree. other thing I liked. Mm -hmm. This girl is on fire. <laughs> yeah, we got a little reference to that. You saw um, her little firehawk thing in the sky. Didn't, did we see her using any? No, Siren powers she at only all? used guns, Ben. Mm -hmm. She okay. only used guns. This has not gone... To say it's not gone down well with Borderlands fans is, is a bit of an understatement. You loved it. I thought it was Border so, Border stands, if you so would. So border stands. stands. Yeah. <laughs> so to continue talking about why it's taken so long very quickly before I give my thoughts, um, filming wrapped in mid-2021. There were reshoots in January 2023, and it's coming out this year. So it's been in the can... For nearly 
four years. Yeah. It was first pitched to Lionsgate in 2015. Yeah. Yeah. And was passed around. This is why we have been talking about like off off content just because we're fans of Borderlands uh, about how this is probably going to be terrible and how actually we kind of want it to be bad because the the worse it is the better because that'd be mm. funnier. Yeah. Uh, it's also from Avi Arad's production company, who uh, are most recently known for the NAF Sony Marvel movies like Morbius and Venom, and also Uncharted. Mm -hmm. uh, it really is. If you look at the uh, Arad Productions uh, sort of most recent releases, it's like a who's who yeah. of horrible movies, apart from an occasional actual banger like the animated Into the Spider-Verse things yeah, and also the the ones that actually have Spider-Man in, like No Way Home and mm. that kind of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, th there's like, this film has very little going for it and that trailer did look, like you said, like they wanted to make Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. It's got Borderlands flavor in there. It's got Borderlands character names in there, but it doesn't really feel like any of those characters are true to the actual characters from Borderlands. She didn't once say we, sub killer. Yeah, sub killer. That's like, she loves she saying that. She didn't call that. me killer one time. She it? loves it. She didn't look directly down the lens and say sub killer. And do you know what point. else didn't happen? What? Weird top of the screen, someone t talking to you from. Oh yeah, like weird live action yeah, yeah, yeah. vision. That was, I hope they do that at some point. I also so didn't I. get sort of um, obnoxious vibes from Claptrap. I think mm. he only had two lines and one of them was, they went. He went down He's that hole. Lead, is that was and then the other one was the lead. He was thing. Having, yeah. He wasn't doing uh, anything claptrap ish. I think at plops. one point he said like, "Have this, bitches," and then uh, he threw done, people down a hole. But that was, yeah, he was actually useful in combat, which again is not right. correct mm. at all. Uh, Roland obviously is is one of the the biggest issues people have with the casting because uh, Kevin Hart is not remotely similar no. to to Roland's character at all. For starters, Roland was very tall. And that's not something that Kate Kevin Blanchett Hart... is a giant. That's not anything that Kevin Hart can help. But also, could you not have cast someone like Terry Crews, who mm. probably could play a straight man? Because Roland was a straight man. Like, he, he, he didn't crack wise. He was very serious. And most of the humorous interactions with him come from other characters like sort of saying, you know, why are you so serious all the time? You have a, come on, relax, let's let's chill out. But he mm -hmm. was he was always very serious. And we saw him probably crack wise the most out of anyone in this trailer. Yeah. He's he just had the playing, most lines. Everyone in this film, for, according to this trailer, is just playing the person they play in most. Yeah. In most yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and not true to the actual characters themselves. The YouTube comments under the trailer. Did they like it, Ben? Uh, no, they didn't. Oh. I've, I picked out some good some good quotes mm -hmm. for you. Uh, it's got big, um, he's behind me, isn't he, energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, by the looks of it, they literally got the world, the guns, the creatures, heck, even Claptrap's design on point. But when it came down to the characters, they were like, find me the most how do you do fellow teens actors imaginable for these iconic character roles. Mm -hmm. Weird that they'd publish their April Fool's gag trailer in February. <laughs> Superb work. You can really tell the production team glanced at the Borderlands Wikipedia page. Yeah. Yes, this is We Have Guardians of the Galaxy at Home. Mm -hmm. Watch them in the sequel make Chris Pratt do Handsome Jack, and he's going to say, It's a me, Handsome Jack, as well as Pandora, here we come. <laughs> and finally, Claptrap sounds like carp. Like what? Oh, carp. like carp. Like carp. Okay, sounds yeah, like yeah, yeah. carp. Claptrap yeah. sounds like carp. Yeah. I have, I do have issues with this, and I worry specifically about Ariana G Greenblatt, who is playing Tiny Tina. Yeah. I think she's going to receive a lot of hate from people oh, who have, so. there's yeah. no reason to do that. She's just a child actor, and she's just um, done a Star Warm as well. She's so done a Star Warm, she probably and got she was in Barbie as well. She's, she's a fantastic actor, she's yeah. and I think and busy. the casting is good for her, but it's just. She, the character isn't Tiny Tina. Yeah, that they, that yeah. they've made her play, and and unfortunately, she's she's being assigned or she's she's signing up to things that have toxic fan base yes they do mm -hmm. yeah 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 mm -hmm. that's a real shame uh, again um i hope it's i hope it's bad mm -hmm. because i think i would like that more do you know what also i loved what? I, so one thing i love about trailers and this production company in particular 
do it all the time. I love when they edit some lines of dialogue together mm. oh, yeah. and all the inflections are wrong. Yes. Like at one point in the trailer, she goes, we have to find the vault. <laughs> <laughs> and I was watching, I reacted to it on stream last night and I paused it and I was cackling because I thought it was so <laughs> funny. And I love it when they're like, you can tell it's like five sentences just mm -hmm. spliced together. I always think like, can they not just like, get them to just record yeah. just even get them on the phone for yeah. god's sake and just mm -hmm. get them to record the line mm -hmm. just for the trailer like do you reckon the they'll do a novelization well. like they did yeah, the uncharted movie maybe. do we get a borderlands movie novelization i, I really hope, says, hope so. at one point um nolan north shows up uh and yeah. in the in, in the novelization <laughs> it says and then a guy who called himself nolan north turned up <laughs> He was relaxing on a sun oh, lounger. It's, uh, we're going to get an Uncharted sequel at some point. Yeah. We cannot wait. We've, we've it's got to. Be great. He this... might end up in a different pizza. Uh, pizza, pizza yeah. Restaurant. I'm yeah. literally yeah. in a Domino's right now. <laughs> yeah. We we are so blessed currently to be living in a golden age of video game adaptations on, on the TV and movie front, mm. but also be blessed with, with movies that are, are terrible, but like not uber bowl early 2000s terrible where yeah. there was no budget it's basically unwatchable like these are these are Mainstream. big budget movies yeah. with big actors in and they're bad and i love it that's like just as this is going to be for me i'm going to get just as much enjoyment out of the borderlands movie with it being bad as the last of us tv mm -hmm. show yes yes yes. just as much enjoyment uh it was uh in to answer to, or to go more into why this has taken so long yeah. uh so it was First, sort of, the idea was being thrown around in May 2015. Uh, it was officially announced as a film in August 2015. Uh, it was going to be an R-rated take on the material in April 2016. That was the idea. It doesn't look like it's going to be R-rated anymore. It's only PG. Yeah. Is it? No, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it feels like blood. it's going to be PG. It? It'll be uh, 12A. Oh God! Uh, so that's the kind of the last we heard is April 2016. That's going to be R-rated. Uh, then in February 2020, Eli Roth was attached to direct the film uh, from a screenplay that had been written by Craig Marzin or Mazin, who you say, who's worked on Chernobyl and Mazin. The Last of Us. Mazin. Yeah. It's going to be Craig Mazin. <laughs> um, Daniel Bedingfield. Yeah. <laughs> Cast was confirmed by like across 2020 and 2021. Then. Amazing script had been rewritten by Jewel or Huel Taylor, uh, who did Creed 2 and Space Jam A New Legacy, uh, and Tony Rattenmeyer, who has no hyperlink on uh, Wikipedia. Okay. So I don't Just know who that guy. is. For you, Tom. Yeah. Uh, and then written again, uh, rewritten again by Roth. Uh, Roth was someone the director. earlier Eli on. Roth. Yeah, the, Eli Roth. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh -huh. uh, so we had some rewrites. Filming started in April 2021 during the COVID-19 pandemic, yeah. although it wrapped in June. So they seemingly did an all right job of that. Um, and then in January 2023, there were two weeks of reshoots that were directed not by Roth, by Tim Miller, because Roth was committed to Thanksgiving 2023. Um, Roth said he wouldn't be involved in the, re in the reshoots, but remained attached to the film and gave Miller his blessing. Oh, that's nice. um, and some some new stuff was written for that sort of that part of it. Uh, and then in June 2023, Amazing removed his name from the project. Uh, replaced by Joe Crombie, who he then had to publicly deny was a pseudonym. <laughs> why would he? Why would he leave the film Joe and then Crombie. remain attached? Well, maybe I guess he thought, oh, because it's going to be really bad, and I don't. What want it doesn't yeah. say in there is when uh, I. Well, I think the real issue when they were filming this was the fact that Randy Pitchford wouldn't leave him alone. Oh, would God. he not? Was well, he involving no, but himself? I just love oh, that video just... of like him being on the set and being like, we're here on the set, meandering around, harassing Kevin Hart. Mm. Uh, what, what, that was like E3 20... Well, it was... 19, maybe? I don't know, because I don't know if it was when I was here or not. No, it would have been when they were shooting. It was so definitely it was an E3. Oh, it was I a think. Gearbox 21 stream, they were shooting. wasn't it? It was, it was During E3, E3 time. I think it was the E3 either just before I started in 2021 yeah. or just after I started. Because I think that was one of the ones we Can't decided not to stream reactions to and then afterwards went, I'm glad we didn't stream reactions yeah. to that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I he, he is going to be an interesting character to watch. He already is, mm -hmm. Randy mm -hmm. Pitchford, but especially during the, the, the sort of like... Um, Do you reckon he'll be in it? Oh, he's definitely oh in gosh. it. He's definitely in it uh, somewhere uh, because... I saw an Instagram reel this morning of some, um, what was it, like breaking, almost breaking down the trailer. 
Right. Mm. So, like, I was just swiping through, and then it said, "See that? That's a Dar logo, like the the weapons manufacturer." And then they, he kept like pausing it, and I was like, "This is an IGN video. Who's it? It's Randy Pitchford going through his own movies." Was trailer, it Randy pointing out like, "There's a runner, sick." Like, On Randy, IGN. <laughs> stop, man! I get that you want to be oh, part God. of like the, the the marketing cycle, but at the same time, like. He please, is please he is enough. poison to his to everything. I do wonder how much on. involvement he actually had in sort of production and like conceptualization mm. and stuff, mm. and you know writing. Did he? Did he? I'm not suggesting he did any writing, but did did he read scripts and say yes or no or mm. yeah? It's, we'll have to wear our Pitchford shirts to yeah. the will yeah. to when we go and see it. Yeah, mm. and no one in the cinema. There'll be no one there apart from us. No yeah. one, no no one, one in, the in the cinema will know no. that those shirts belong to Randy There's Pitchford, a little bit of Randy. But we'll know. They're worth $400 yeah. each. And anyone who's been like, I'm a real fan of Borderlands, I'd be like, are you wearing Randy Pitchford's shirt? Yeah. Don't think so, I homie. am. Suck it. <laughs> that would be a bit strange though, wouldn't it? If it, we, would. If, it would. If anyone went peculiar. to go and see the Borderlands movie. And I reckon if we talked about it enough, we could probably make the headlines. That together would be weird news. It's weird news time, time for some weird video game news. Remember, if you'd like to submit some weird video game news to us, you can do so under the relevant social media post that goes out on a Tuesday. If Tuesday. Not, go to Patreon. Thank you, Ashton. If not, go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. Support us at the appropriate tier and uh, become a podcast producer. Guarantee yourself a shout out at this point in the po podcast. Just like Chris Thompson's thumbs. G.Y. Goliath. Nexus Polaris. Nicole Hansen. Kyle Gary. Andy Scott. Blake Thomas. Lockie Morris. Sharman Nomo. Great Giggity. Melody Elbonet. Katie Garrett. Gabrielle Philipping. Potato underscore Shack 99. Eric Sue. And big money, Bobby Vegas. Thank you, podcast producers. Thank producer. you, podcast producers. Thank you, podcast producers. Got some weird news, Peter? I got some weird news. It was sent to us by Connor Bennett at cbennett underscore 12 on Twitter. I don't think anyone... I did check the Facebook, and I don't think anyone sent it there. This is according to Go, Nintendo. Go! Go! Written by Raw Meat Cowboy. I Lovely. I don't think that's their given I don't think it's their real name. No. Do you mean that's his Christian name? Yes. Uh, the headline is, Hyperkin releases Oscar Mayer, Kool-Aid, and Sriracha. It actually says Sriracha there. That is how you spell Sriracha. Is it? Yeah. Wow. Oh, I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, if you look on a bottle, it's Sriracha. I've read Racha. always just blindly assumed it is not Sriracha. No, that's Sriracha how... on a Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday, <laughs> Wednesday in February. Yes, Feb February. Uh, switch controllers. <sighs> okay. Is the end of that sentence. And it says update in, bra in parentheses. Oh, my goodness. It's not What's edible. the update? Uh, well, the subheading is, well, hot dog. Good. There you go. Um... Looking for a new controller for your Switch? Hyperkin has plenty of high-quality options available. <laughs> Sounds like an ad. Yeah. But now they've added three incredibly stylish options for Switch owners. Okay, I guess that depends on your own definition of stylish, but they're certainly interesting designs at the very least. Mm -hmm. Hyperkin has teamed up with Oscar Meyer. Is it Meyer or Mayer, Ashton? I think it's Meyer, Meyer. I think. Meyer, yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Uh, Oscar Meyer, Kool-Aid, and Sriracha for three very unique versions of their Bluetooth Switch controller. These $40 controllers use Bluetooth, Bluetooth up to 30 feet and feature high-quality symmetrical sticks, responsive action button feel, and reliable triggers. This nice. does feel like a sponsored arm. Article. Hmm. It probably I is. They've just copied is. and pasted it directly that. from yeah. the press release. Yeah. Um, they're offering accompanying cases for these controllers for uh, separately for $20. Are pop. they hot dog buns? <laughs> oh, that, that would, would be, be good. good. It would be. It would be good. I think it, that would actually be sick. <laughs> if you take a controller, if, if you'd like to take a closer look at the controller or cases, you can find them on the official Hyperkin store, which they've linked to. Uh, yeah. Um, update. Hyperkin has also update. revealed it also uh, a uh, Heinz ketchup and Kraft mac and cheese controller and case. They're also available now. You can make your purchases th for those through this link. Oh. Would you like to see the controllers? That's the mac and cheese uh, the one. The mac and cheese one isn't very good. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. The Heinz one is good. The yeah. ketchup one's good. Bright, nice design. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's like the, the oh cases. wow, the case wow, is great. Oh, the yeah. case is just good. looks like a bottle of ketchup. Oh. Ooh. I oh, think maybe those Whoops. are just the oh. that's the end. Just We've the got the other ones. Oh, there they are. Yeah. 
Oh, those look cool. This hot sriracha one's top. cool. I think all three of them look quite cool. They do actually, actually look quite nice. I'm scared sriracha. of hot dogs. You're scared. Like not, the sausage. No, we don't have time. Oh, yeah. We just don't have On time. Main menu, we don't have time out. to unpack this right now. <laughs> Another time. I can't open this Pandora's box. <laughs> whatever this is. I have a news. Do you? Submitted by Jonathan Wong on Facebook okay. by Adam Starkey for Metro. Asta is selling Immortals of Avum for just one pound. Oh, oh no! God, yeah. that is that is harsh. A pound after costing one hundred twenty-five million dollars to make. Immortals of Avon is now being sold for just one pound only six months after launch. Oh, my God. It is one of the most high-profile financial flops of last year, almost instantly resulting in severe layoffs at developer Ascendant Studios. <sighs> Another sad sting to the tail, the ma magical, magical shooter is now being sold for just one pound at UK supermarket Asda, only six months after launch. Morse of Avon was originally priced at $69.99 when it came out in August. I can't believe it came out in August. In my mind, that came out in like February. Mm. Um, according to social media, the game was already reduced to five pounds at Asda as Supermarket seemingly attempts to clear out its stock. Um, and there's a picture of it on the shelf looking very sad. Hey, don't make me watch an advert to click on a Twitter link. You'll piss me off. <laughs> Uh, there it is. Look, just a pound. Oh God! Okay, Next my, to something that's thirty quid. Hey, yeah. any of you entrepreneurs out there, go go get it. Go get as many copies as you can and take them to CEX because you'll get eight pounds cash. Oh, <laughs> wow! Nice. So Profit. on PS Five, go and do that. Go yeah. and trade them all in. Profit. That is unreal. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, well, it's a shame. And They're, then it tells you what the game is, and then it tells you what Asda is. What it's is similar, Asda? It's a similar story. It's Walmart. <laughs> it's Walmart. Well, actually, I think well, it's, it's owned, Tesco's Walmart. It's owned Walmart. by Walmart. No, Asda's owned yeah, by Walmart. Yeah, Asda and Walmart. Uh, and but it Walmart isn't our well. Walmart. It's just a supermarket. Um, yeah. That is unfortunate. I don't think we've actually covered it on this podcast, but they're, one of the developers came out and said that, hey, we did everything that people well, supposedly is, here's want. Here's the quote. Okay, go um, on. Sure, there was some serious talent on the development team. This is from a former employee, by the way. But trying to make a AAA single-player shooter in today's market was a truly awful idea. I don't think that was your issue. Um, no. Especially since it was a new IP that was also trying to leverage Unreal Engine 5. What ended up launching was a bloated, repetitive campaign that was far too long. Well, there was, that's the issue then. It's not that it was... I, the narrative that came out of this that we've all disagreed with when we've spoken about it off yeah. content and and i think is re reflected by a lot of people as well is that the issue wasn't that they tried to make a first person shooter in the current market climate it's that they made it boring a really uninteresting one yeah yeah that was their problem i played it for like six hours and then i was bored yeah Look. a quid though that is a damning indictment isn't it mm. ea Bloody reportedly boring. invested 125 million dollars into making Oh, here it is. Yeah, this is PC Gamer. Uh, mm. Hang on, are they quoting someone or are they just saying it themselves as an opinion? Um, yeah, this is a, a, an article that PC Gamer put out and they've just said, EA reportedly invested $125 million making a new single-player IP with zero microtransactions, no grind, a shorter running time, and guess what? Nobody bought it. Nobody bought it because it was boring. The EA. implication being that we should be having all these like microtransaction heavy. Yeah, because yeah. live service games. games famously also yeah. do really yeah. well. The bad they? take by PC Gamer. Yeah, Woof. what absolute horrible take. Mm. Wow. It's crap take. Idiots. Babies. Um, that That's was, it. That was yeah. your weird news. Yeah, it's my turn. turn now, isn't it? I've got weird news that comes courtesy of Paul Ansel and James Matthews on Facebook and Chris at Longest, Longest of Shots on Twitter. James Matthews, do you know him? No relation. No. Do you have a cousin called James? <laughs> oh my God, it's yeah. him. Okay. <laughs> this is from the Gamer Ant, uh, Lauren Beeler Bystad, who is one of the Gamer Ants. Uh, the <laughs> headline is Lost Fallout New Vegas Fred Durst mod makes a comeback after seven years. Can I tell you a secret about this? Is it a secret? You found it. It's about me. Um, yeah. I, when I saw this, I got it. I got him confused with Fred West. Oh my god! Oh, the serial, serial killer. 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 Right. I was like, "Why has someone done that?" And then, um, and then I, At I last, read it. Jesus, and the it Fred and Rose West deal uh, <laughs> mod I was has like, been Isn't found. Isn't Fred Durst a serial killer? And then I realized no. I was wrong. He he only wants to fly, <laughs> chocolate starfish, etc. A Fallout New Vegas mod featuring limp biscuit frontman Fred Durst has made a surprise <laughs> comeback after years of being wiped from the internet. Fallout New Vegas is one of the most popular entries in the post-apocalyptic survival franchise, and the Fred Durst mod was an absolutely absurd addition to the game. 
It then tells us what Fallout New Vegas is. Yeah, what, what Asda is. is. <laughs> uh, and then it tells us again that Fred Durst being Does it tell you who Fred Durst back. is? It does, yeah. Does it say, don't get Ashton does need to Not that. Fred West. <laughs> Thanks to a Twitter <laughs> user known as Usagi Cola, the mod has been found and restored, bringing Fred Durst back to his rightful place in the Mojave Desert. The mod was originally released in 2015, but and was eventually Yorkshire taken Dales. down. The New Vegas modding community... <laughs> has managed to bring a lot of great content to Obsidian Survival RPG, but it was believed the Fred Durst mod was lost forever until now. You've said that like four times mm -hmm. in this article. It was lost forever until now. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, today we've made modding history. The Limp Biscuit mod for Fallout New Vegas has been found and restored. Uh, link to Google Doc down below. So there we are. An NPC that looks exactly like Fred Durst is funny enough. But the cherry on top is how the NPC only speaks in Limp Biscuit oh, yeah, lyrics. I've seen a clip of that. When a player interacts with Fred Durst, he replies with portions of Limp Biscuit songs. And its over the top absurdity is, hilar is a hilarious extra layer added to New Vegas. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It just keeps going and going. Um, but yeah, I can't play any of it because we will get content ID matched because it's just clips of the songs where, you know, you tell them to do something and he just goes, it's just one of those days. Yeah. And that's it. It just says, he just speaks in bits of it's song. It's very good. Mm -hmm. He's got his backwards cap, his soul patch. It's Fred Durst. Everyone loves Fred Durst. Mm -hmm. um, not so those kids. No, what? <laughs> oh my God. Not Fred West. <laughs> not Fred West. <laughs> I got so confused. <laughs> Why, everyone's everyone celebrating so this serial killer. I was like, that guy's killed people. And then I realized it wasn't him. He's going to kill people in this game, to be fair. Yeah. Fred West is uh, quite quite often, he's one of the people that gets, uh, it's like when they abuse those systems where like walkers say, get your face on. And it's like a portrait <laughs> oh, with like God. Gary Lineker or whatever. And it gets like posted you, to their official social media. You tweet Hulk Hogan like, oh, yeah. can you wish my, my dad happy yeah, birthday? He's one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. awful. Mm. Uh, that was weird news. Thank you so much, everybody, for submitting that weird news. It's time now for the big discussion. It's big discussion time. Time for the big video game discussion that this week comes courtesy of Chris McVeigh. Chris says, hi, Bap. Hello. Hi. This week's Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase saw a few interesting announcement, announcements. Sorry. Oh, let me try that again. Announcements. There we are. Yeah, nice. It was generally pretty low key, with new rumors about the successor to the Switch appearing pretty much every day. Do you think this relatively fallow late era for the console suggests that developers are hoping to be rid of it sooner rather than later? Mm. Thank you, Chris. This Nintendo Direct was weird, wasn't it? Like, the fact that it wasn't live. Yeah. It was yeah. just like 20 minute video. I'm always I thrown by the man doing voiceover for every he's, single he's game. Yeah. So Having to excited. like just a huge tonal shift where now I'm talking about something serious. Yeah. But now we're jumping around in colorful, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah. weird. I looked to their last like one from last year, because like normally they do one in February and then one in the summer, and then one towards the end of the year. And their one from February last year was 45 minutes long and like quite substantial with the content that, that like the games they announced. So I was quite surprised this one was 20 minutes long and just kind of a video Not uploaded live, onto their yeah. YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Weird. Anyway. It was a bit odd. We were all sort of- Weird news. Uh, <laughs> we were sort of watching it live-ish. Um, and we were sort of watching oh, yeah. it at the same time and, mm -hmm. and, and commenting in the chat. So some of the, the lines that that voiceover man had to say, Oh my God, my favorite one. Were bonkers. My favorite one yeah. was, it's liquidy, it's solidy, it's goo. It's goo. <laughs> that was my favorite line. I'm going to the, I'm gonna go into the chat and read some because it, it was only yesterday at the time of recording. The word homunculus was said so many Homunculi. Times, homunculi. Yeah. The I, homunculi. I had to Google, what is a homunculus? Because I had never heard it used so much and I still didn't know what a homunculus was by the time I left. It's just mm -hmm. some guy, like a person or something infested by some kind of virus or parasite. The, the alchemists used to try and make them. It's like a little <laughs> little person. Mm. You could like do something with a chicken egg or something and make a human being out of it, which is not what you could actually do. Check yeah. the position of other horses. That was one of them. <laughs> that was a good one. Umami magic. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what else we got? I mean, there's... there's oh, this. There was just it's all liquidy, sorts. It's it's solidy. It's, it's goo. goo. Yeah, there were just so good. Some really bizarre thing. Gandam was there. Gandam was exciting. There. Yeah. I've said it. Is that Gandam and Gunpla? <laughs> yes. Mm. Um, Very odd. He also just used a, a perfectly ordinary word as though it was like an unusual one in one of in like the sort of the sim like little village building one. He was like, oh yeah. People have different roles. 
called Jobs or something like that. It's something like, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't quite that, but. Yeah. It was very bizarre. Yeah. Uh, Peter and I have got a few sort of highlights we're going to run through and talk about. We're not going to go through every single thing yeah. that was no. shown. It was only about 25 None minutes long. You can go and watch it now. But even I felt remotely interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't write anything down because mm -hmm. I just was not bothered by any of it. So this was a partner showcase. So it wasn't going to have first party stuff there. So no Princess no. Peach Showtime and, uh, or anything else that might be coming out. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we'll talk about the, the Switch's life cycle shortly. But uh, what did you think, Peter? Have you got anything written down there? I've got a few written down. Um, Super Monkey Ball looked quite cute and fun it all it looked a bit fall guysy when they had all the um like the multiplayer bit at the end where there were like 16 monkeys or something um, what i liked about this showcase speaking of that mm -hmm. is that there were so many single player games that like now you play it with 100 people in yeah. it <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right yeah. okay uh, i've never properly played a super monkey ball i've like briefly been hands-on with it for like an hour maybe at a friend's house or something i don't even remember when but I've i had it on thought, the wii and it used to drive me mental right it's so hard I, it, it does look hard but i've always kind of wanted to give it a go and just never got around to it so that i was like oh more super monkey ball okay um the battlefront classic collection obviously i'm interested by that yes we need to talk about that because i i feel like for us that was the biggest thing to come yeah. out because it's also coming to other platforms it as is. well yeah that's... 64 players online yeah man. Yeah, it's exciting. And it will like run well, very, very well. I'm sure I tweeted saying this is like, for me, the best thing from the showcase. And I played it on PS2 not long ago. And wow, it doesn't it's not aged well in terms of performance. You right, know, right. the gameplay is still kind of what you know, how you remember it. But uh, when I was flying around in space, I was like, wow, this is not this mm -hmm. isn't running very well at all. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, just to have a nice like clean build of that couple of like extra characters and maps that were I think yeah. like Xbox exclusive or something. Oh, okay. Top Kit Fisto. Topless Kit Fisto and Asage Ventress, who's from the 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 Claymation show. Yes. It's not Claymation. That's <laughs> yes. a reference to something. Um I'm very curious about how they handle the online here because EA might accidentally make something that is way more popular mm. than the actual the most recent two Star Wars Battlefront yeah. games. Like, are they going to overhaul it so that there's like a progression system? Are they going to put it into like microtransaction live oh service God, hell? Yeah. Or are they just going to do it? Or as is it, it just going to be like a really competent, you know, because everyone loves the original Battlefront mm -hmm. games anyway? It could just be that this game it blows up, it gets like a budget release and, and it, it supports 64 players. And this is kind of what we've spoken about several times before where we don't always need to be pushing or we shouldn't necessarily always be pushing for like cutting ed edge mm. visuals and stuff like that. Because if we continue to make games that looked like that, like PS2 games, mm. just think how broad in scope they could be now if like it yeah. does look kind of hideous, mm -hmm. you know? It could, it will look hideous, but it could be extremely popular. Mm. It could be. And I've it's it's probably to an extent my algorithm, but I've seen that I've seen a lot of people talking about this in the wake of that. People mm. getting excited. I've had people like message me, like a couple of friends I've not spoken to in a while, saying, Have you seen that this is coming out? Uh, so yeah, I think that's uh, it's an interesting one. And I'm I'm keen to see how well it does. Yeah, me too. Um Epic Mickey rebrushed. Um I've heard good things about Epic Mickey. Uh, it was available on Wii. I thought it looked quite bad on the... Uh, on the... Isn't it a remake? It is yeah. a remake, It doesn't yeah. look like a remake, does it? It, yeah. it did not look like it was running well in the Switch trailer, um, mm -hmm. but it's also going to be out on um, P PS4 and 5, but yeah. I don't think Xbox. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. sure. And I'd like to think it will run better on a PS5. It's like a Wii game originally. Um, it, but... was on, it was on a few things, I think. Maybe was it was ported. I don't know if it was a Wii game originally. Oh, there I was thought... a... The second one was oh right, Epic Mickey two. Uh, might be with of Oswald that. was on. It didn't. We like, it didn't set the world on fire. I feel like I, again, this is a weird candidate for a remake. Yeah, and you'll never guess who's publishing it. Is it Embracer Group? Yes, it right. is. Do you yeah. know who in Embracer it is? Or don't know. I, I, I can. I can I Google look it, up? it Yeah, have a have a look. But this is this is their mo. Yeah, where they remake stuff that doesn't need remaking yeah and then it probably underperforms and mm -hmm. it's not very it's and then someone weird. gets if you if you go back and watch the trailer this mm. specifically the switch version of the trailer it is it's like the frame rate is not good in refurbished Re oh sorry rebrushed rebrushed okay. but then when you when you click on when you search for it on game it's listed as disney epic mickey refurbished 
And on Steam, it's Disney Epic Mickey rebrushed. That must be a typo from game. Yeah. Surely, right? Refurbished. Unless it's got a UK name, you know, like Zootopia and Zootopolis. Mm. Refurbished would make sense if it was like yeah, someone, been, someone else's game. Refurbished has just been announced at Nintendo Direct 2024. Is it just people just misreading hey? it or autocorrect? Hey? What are you doing? <laughs> Weird. Double check it is Embrace it because I might have been wrong. I think it's THQ Nordic or something. Yeah, why like Why does game say it's called Refurbished? That's very bizarre. Because you can buy products from game that are refurbished. Yeah. So maybe it... But Maybe it's just selling a but the fact that it says it was announced at the end. Yeah, weird. Okay. Very strange. Oh, um, so yeah, I, I've I've seen some people in certain circles it's from saying THQ that, Nordic. There we right, go. Okay. Of course it is. Yeah, of course. Uh, saying that they enjoyed the original, and I've always thought like, oh, I wonder was that any good? And so I'm. I'll probably just keep an eye on this one. But the Switch trailer specifically, it is like hanging in places, or like it's yeah. it's low. There was low a couple rate. of that of similar like issues in the D Nintendo Direct like, a couple of the games looked like they were running like ass and yeah. I was like this is your showcase yeah. why are we using footage of games that don't run very well on your planet. You can't accuse them of lying, I suppose, when it comes to No. Out. Yeah, well, and you could tell yeah. it wasn't an issue with either the VOD itself or even sort of the, the way they'd rendered out the trailer because it would be like, it would be chugging in gameplay sections and they'd suddenly cut to a cutscene mm -hmm. segment yeah. and that would be running smoothly. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I've Just, got a couple more, but you, you go. You well, go. I was going to say, speaking of games that didn't look like they ran very well yeah. we finally got the actual confirmation <laughs> yeah. of the xbox games that are beginning that are going to be mm -hmm. coming yeah uh, so pentiment is out now at the time of release of this podcast on switch and playstation as well mm -hmm. uh, grounded is coming to switch that, that did not look like, like it ran ass. very well no. yeah. and it's now being confirmed that hi-fi rush and sea of thieves will also be coming oh, have um, they confirmed that, have they? that certainly for playstation i don't know about switch yeah right. uh, but that'll they'll all be out by the end of april and as we predicted last week two games got like nice showcase uh, <laughs> yeah. nicely showcased in in a direct <laughs> yeah and then the playstation announcement was just yeah, they're come, yeah. yeah, coming. Yeah, we're, we're doing <laughs> yeah, it as well. Don't yeah. care. Uh, so yeah, that mm -hmm. was that was about right. But grounded, I think Pentiment was shown in like a highlight reel trailer with a, other stuff, end, yeah. like a sizzle reel, and then um, grounded did get its own section. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when it was cutting between like the third person sh like shots of like characters running across the screen, and then the actual first person gameplay, mm -hmm. first person gameplay looked looked a bit. Yeah. Need to get that a Zelda witch on it. Good. But it needs to like the whole point of grounded is that it's a like they want to extend the the player base, so they can't like build a custom switch build mm. that runs like it has to work the same as other consoles, mm -hmm. which is maybe why it's struggling a bit. Yeah. yeah. Did you have any more? Uh, I did have a couple. Uh, Penny's big breakaway was shadow dropped. Uh, we I thought that looked bad. But my boyfriend was like, "That looked great." It's, and it's I like was just a like, weird. mascot platform. Yeah, I know. Thing, it's a, right? yeah, yeah. Thing. I just thought it didn't look very like. It gave me like big PlayStation Three vibes. It just didn't <laughs> like the, like look very good. I, I just think. found it a bit confusing. I didn't really yeah, know what yeah. to make of it. People were very upset about a couple of things. There was a huge tease because a lot of Nintendo fans for the longest yeah. time have wanted Rare Replay, uh, which has obviously been on on Xbox for a while now because there are so many classic N64 mm -hmm. games in there. Conker's Bad Fur Day and Goldeneye and Banjo. that kind of stuff. Banjo. Mm -hmm. um, and they showed the Rare logo <laughs> and then went, ah, ah, we're actually going to bring some really old Rare yeah. classics yeah, to like the Switch Online. 16 bit a subscription thing. And to be fair, that may just be laying the groundwork because I've, from what I understand, the Rare Replay, some of the games on it were actually Xbox 360 versions of those games yeah. that were then mm -hmm. booting up separately and emulated on the xbox mm -hmm. yeah and I think as a 360 big, i think game. a lot of them it was the big ones it was like conquer and, mm -hmm. and banjo and stuff i think they were the ones that were were emulated i think so it's um, not quite as straightforward to bring rare replay over but you have to believe that that's that's in the works and also once it was finished it turns out that a mother three is going to japan's nintendo switch online subscription yes, yeah. and people have been wanting mother three for a very long time mm -hmm. uh, some tables were flipped mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to put it mildly what else have you got um and uh, endless ocean luminous i yes. thought it looked very sort of sweet and calming and uh you know lovely mm -hmm. um i could probably play a game like that and not be involved in the multiplayer at all and have just as good a time yeah um I think in in a way it's it's nice to swim around a deep ocean without having loads of people around you. It's more about yeah. like 
No, let me. It's like an underwater safari kind of thing. Yeah, where you just document all with their like wildlife. hundreds of different fish. I mm-hmm. think yeah. and some were mythical and some were extinct. Um, From what I understand, it was a rid- there was a Wii game originally. Yeah, yeah and just I'd just never heard of it. Ocean, I think. I think so. Yeah, I'd yeah. never heard of it. I wasn't. A, I wasn't a Wii boy. Do you know? Is it like a follow up or is it just a remake of the Wii version? I imagine it's a new one. I right? think it's a new one. Yeah, it's like yeah. all new. I don't know if oh, the original yeah. one had any kind of online. To it, but yeah, have a have a double check. And the one other one I had sticking with the ocean theme uh, is I, I wasn't necessarily I didn't write this down to say it looked good, but another crab's treasure. I yes. just wanted to bring that up because apparently it's a souls like. Yeah, it's like is, a cartoony cutesy souls like that looks like Little Mermaid. What on earth is that about? Very like, bizarre. So many of those games just had me like shaking my head and just like I was just looking at it and I was just like. I don't, why is this being the thing that's being showcased? Like that crab game mm. looked like such, just like just steam rubbish that you get on like the homepage of Steam. Like you can play a crab game. <laughs> <laughs> it's got, I mean, the reaction's been pretty good I because know. the premise is I so feel like crazy. I'm insane when I look, I'm like, why am I the only one that thinks <laughs> this is probably kind of weird? Right. Right. Like, I, I didn't think it looked like bad but i just thought oh okay it's not like the the first few seconds of footage i was like oh what's this and mm-hmm. then like the more i saw i was like oh it's not for me but mm-hmm. you know i thought oh, that's a shame it could have been it could have been for me but isn't yeah it's not it's not uh endless ocean luminous it's not a remake it is the third title oh the third okay the cool yeah i saw a couple of nintendo fans that i follow on twitter like quite excited about mm-hmm. playing that and yeah look look lovely and yeah. you can all go you can go down there with like a group of other scuba divers mm-hmm. and just chill out and a lot of them by the way. nothing's mm-hmm. trying to kill you which is lovely uh, returning to chris's question about sort of the end of the switch's life cycle obviously chris and and you ashton didn't feel very impressed by this direct um and it seems to have divided opinions on that front because i heard a lot of people actually said it was quite good and that mm-hmm. there was a lot there for them um but what what do you guys think peter what do you think about what remains of the Switch's life cycle and how this this direct could potentially be a sign of it yeah i know it's difficult to um, I think it's difficult to use this direct to comment on, um, you know, how how well the Switch's future is looking in terms of game availability because this was, um, you know, intentionally, th- this was not for first-party stuff. And I think that's what, personally, I think that's what Nintendo does best. And certainly, I think that's what the Switch does best. Um, so, and and if you, if you factor in first-party Nintendo stuff, I think, you know, past few months past year or so nintendo's been doing a, a pretty good job and it, it's it's all you know been promising and you could i think you could feel quite optimistic about it um but i guess chris is saying well maybe the fact that this in terms of third party developers mm-hmm. the fact that there wasn't so much here is is that saying that all right nintendo might be quite happy to continue to put out some really good stuff on their console but are other people less uh, less inclined to do so mm. I don't know. It's difficult to say because the Switch obviously has its hardware limitations, and that's 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 the the thing that if if there's been anything that has um, kind of hounded the Switch or, or been a problem for the Switch over the past few years, it's those limitations. You know, it kind of it's it's in its own little corner of the game development world. Mm-hmm. People who are making stuff for PS Five uh, and, and Xbox Series have to think carefully about whether or not they also bring something to Switch. Um, so it's kind of a home for its own brand of games and its own sort of size and scope of games. And I think if, if you factor that in and consider the fact that, you know, the Switch, it's never going to have loads of big hitters being announced in any given showcase, then I don't, I, 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 I think ultimately it's it's a bit of a half assed answer, but I think there's not enough evidence here to say, oh, I think perhaps developers are being turned off the Switch now and are wanting to look elsewhere. Like, yeah, maybe it wasn't a super exciting showcase for a lot of people, but just because there wasn't an awful lot here and now, that's not to say that that, that is a sign of things to come. I think sometimes you have a bit of a dud showcase every so often. And as you say, Ben, I think other people thought it was impressive and yeah. exciting um so yeah i mean for me as we've said the most exciting thing was battlefront which is going elsewhere uh, as well so yeah it it's uh i don't think this is writing on the wall for the switch um 
I have some mixed feelings about what's happening with the Switch because obviously the last few months they've put out a lot of a lot of games. We've had Super Mario RPG, which was a remake. We've had Mario vs. Donkey Kong, which is a remake. We've had Super Mario Wonder, which was another mainline installment into Mario franchise. Next month we have Peach's Showtime, Showtime. Mm-hmm. whatever it's called. Princess Peach Showtime? I, I think, think so. The name yeah, of it. I think that's what it's called. Um, but that is the last thing that they currently have announced. Mm. Metroid Prime 4, whatever it is. Yeah. The one that's been in development forever. Yeah. Um, but Princess Peach Showtime is the last thing, like first party title that they have in the pipeline. And obviously yesterday's showcase didn't necessarily have the next like big thing coming to the Switch that people can get excited for. Not, I'm not saying that that's the end of the Switch's life cycle. Like, cause it could be like, as of May, done, yeah. you know? But I do think that the Switch is becoming a console that is harder and harder and harder to work with when other consoles are so much further into the hardware-like field than they are. We've seen it a lot recently with games like Mortal Kombat launching on the Switch oh God, and running so like ass. Right so funny. Um, <laughs> and like we've seen even games like the Arkham Trilogy don't run. And these are games that ran on a PlayStation 3 and they will not run on the Switch. I know everyone will like level back at me, but what about Tears of the Kingdom? But as we discussed last week, that was made by a witch. That was made by witches. Um, yeah. It shouldn't run. It, it should not run. It doesn't make sense. Doesn't make any sense. Um, so I think that potentially we'll be hearing, so I'm hopeful soon, because I don't know how much longer it's, the Switch will be able to get away with not improving its hardware. Mm-hmm. I think that revenge, eventually we're going to run into an issue where all of the games coming out on the Switch are the same, especially from Nintendo. A lot of their more recent games are very, very similar and have very similar limitations. Princess Peach Showtime is a side-scrolling Mario game. Wonder was a side-scrolling Mario game. And again, those are great games. I'm not, well, Princess Peach is out yet, but Wonder was a it's great game. It's probably going to be really good. Yeah, it's yeah, probably going to yeah. be really good. You can guarantee they'll make a good game but how long they're going to get away with just having their games on their platform is a wonder. Um, a Super Mario wonder, yeah. if you want to oh. um, Because it's not, objectively, playing a game on the Switch is the worst way to play most games. Battlefronts will run better on PlayStation. Mm. It, um, Mortal Kombat runs better everywhere else. It is objectively the worst place to play a multi-platform game um, for the vast majority of games. Unless you want to take it with you. Unless you want to take it with you. This is the thing. Which is great. But also, nowadays, if you're really, 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 really wanting to take games with you and you're on the move a lot, but you want a good experience, there's alternatives. And Mm. if it's a game that's releasing on PC, there's like five or six different handhelds that you can get they are obviously a bit more expensive than a Switch, but they'll run a lot more games and you have a bigger library of games that it will run well. Like Lenovo has one. Obviously, it's the Steam Deck. Lenovo has one. I think I think Samsung Nvidia has, has one. one. Nvidia has one. Like there's loads of ways you can play PC games on the go now. Obviously, Xbox has, released, has put stuff on cloud gaming. A lot of those cloud gaming games, if you have a good enough internet connection, can be played wherever you go. Um PlayStation are not doing it as well, but at least they now have their handheld, whatever it's portal. called, portal. Remote play is pretty good. Remote play is all right need, if you're in the same house, you admittedly. Need good internet. Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, there is other ways to play portably. Obviously, they've cornered the market a lot with being the handheld console, but eventually I don't think that's going to be enough. So I'm hopeful that they will be announcing their next thing potentially by the end of the year, if not earlier on to be released end of the year next year. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, fingers crossed. From a consumer sort of player perspective, I think Nintendo fans are in a really good spot at the moment just because mm-hmm. of the, like, they really have been just smashing out games the past few months, as you've said. And, you know, we got Princess Beach. Maybe we don't know what comes after that, admittedly. We do have a Pokemon Direct. There's Pokemon Day at the mm-hmm. end of this month. 
Yeah. So it could well be that we well, get Pokemon another Pokemon. Pokemon games notoriously have been, been really good. Well, exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. They that run so well. plays exactly people into your argument. People don't trust that. They, they, you know, we were talking a little while ago about mm. um, people don't trust Naughty Dog as much anymore. Mm. People do not trust the game Pokemon free. games. No, yeah. and that's and that's fair enough. But they still sell 12 billion well, copies yes, and they'll be exclusive to Nintendo. Yeah. So it could well be that we get a couple of, maybe a, a remake. I know people, it's a dirty word, but from what I can gather, as someone who's not a huge Nintendo fan, Nintendo fans have been absolutely thrilled with the remake mm -hmm. stuff, you know, some of the older stuff that's been coming uh, recently, and they continue to add value through the online subscription as well with stuff like that. So there's there's plenty for Nintendo players to be getting on with, if not potentially looking forward to, if we don't get any confirmation of any future games. Uh, from a developer perspective, of course, yes, it's got to be hard and it's got to be frustrating to still be working with um Pr proprietary, not proprietary, like primarily uh, handheld software, a yeah. uh, hardware, bloody hell, uh, from 2017. You know mm. that that stuff, even then, didn't match the 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 current crop of consoles because obviously, if it's going to be packed into a little handheld, it it can't. And to to still be working with that now is a challenge, and it must be frustrating. I don't imagine, as Chris says, the devs are, are hoping to to get rid. I mean, I'm sure they'll be happy to, to be working on newer hardware, mm. but I would imagine the fact that there wasn't a huge presence, you know, or, or, or the, the fact that there wasn't a, a a load of amazing, huge third-party games here is probably the reason that it's always been, mainly that these games just can't run on the Switch and so that, you know, you're not going to get Call of Duty on it. But also, most of them are now probably tinkering away with hardware of the whatever the Switch success is going to be because mm -hmm. we know that that's going to be coming within the next 12 months in all likelihood. Uh, if not the end of this year, then probably very early next year. So I would imagine that's that's what they'll be doing uh, currently. But there's, there's still stuff to look forward to. And I think, you know, the Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase isn't necessarily for me. It's never really been for me. I'm not primarily a Switch player, but I could see that there were some games there to, to look forward to. And I've certainly seen the discourse online err on the side of positivity rather than negativity. In, mm. in my little to be fair one thing about ecosystem. Nintendo fans yeah. they're going to be happy with it yeah. like you can look at like a, a, a Playstation showcase <sighs> I've got to turn this yeah. off yes. I'm, really, I am really being cool. cooked really alive beefy. by this heater um, one thing about Playstation fans and Xbox fans is even if they're fans of the of the console and the manufacturer they will still get angry at a showcase whereas Nintendo fans will be like thank you so much for even <laughs> putting a showcase on that was amazing there's stuff to look forward to they're just to. so much nicer than yeah, they're good, Sony they're Xbox good fans. the thing about the Switch is I think it's got it's, it's as I said earlier it's got it's very, very much its own wheelhouse and I think it depends what your average Switch player is signing up for mm -hmm. and as a non-Switch player, uh, it's difficult for me to to say, you know, this is exactly what your average player wants. But if it's the case that they're really, they're mainly there for Nintendo first party stuff, which mm -hmm. I feel like that might be what a lot of uh, Switch players are, are most into, then they are going to be, or they, they have, they will have been happy over the past year, two years, three years, the, the whole life cycle of the Switch. Mm -hmm. And yeah, all right, we don't have anything announced uh, going forward, first party, but I'm sure Nintendo will will pull some stuff out in the next few months. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, all right, things are a bit fallow in terms of third party, but that might not really be what most Switch players are there for anyway. So as you say, Ben, it's it's a, a different perspective from a, a consumer and a developer. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the developers I'm sure aren't happy uh, continuing to work with this, but as a consumer. I suspect that a lot of them don't really mind that mm -hmm. there's not as much third-party stuff on the Switch as you would get elsewhere. Yeah. It's also a phenomenal indie device as well. Yes. Yeah. And those games do run, and they're great, and you can take them anywhere, and it's super convenient. The Switch is still a brilliant piece of, of hardware just from a design oh, perspective, even if it can't, you know, if it struggles to run grounded, then that's a shame, but... Maybe you that's not why you're there. Yeah. And also you can take it with you and, yeah. and play it any way you want. So, yeah, I mean, I'm very excited to see what, what they follow up um, the, the Switch with. Mm. But uh, it has it has to be more powerful. Mm. It has. It does. Yeah. It well, has to match even a little bit more to mm -hmm. what we're currently working with on other platforms. Mm -hmm. Please. Yeah. But it also has to be affordable. It's a difficult thing Absolutely. because, you know, 
talking earlier about how the PS5 has not really got in, it went up in price, and that's absurd mm. at this point in its life cycle to be to, to, for that to happen and for it to have not really reduced in price at all. The Switch, though, while not a, a budget system by any stretch of the imagination, has a very different target demographic than the, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox does. And so they they need they they can't shove it full of like crazy hardware. You know, it can't it's not gonna have Steam Deck capabilities. Mm. But it needs to be better than the Switch is now. It's that it's the triangle, isn't it, where you can only have two. It's yeah. like it has to be affordable. It has to be more powerful if they do a, another thing. But also you still have to be able to take it on the go and do all of the USP like switch stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you probably can't have all three of those at like, you know, ten out of ten. You're gonna have to compromise somewhere. So you are. They're gonna have to make some decisions. There's no way they won't do another portable system. It's just yeah. like oh, no, a, it's absolutely. just got it's they just struck gold with the hybrid. Yeah. Um, idea and then they've got to they must continue mm. that well that brings us to the end of the podcast thank you so much for listening slash watching let us know what you thought of everything we discussed today in the comments section below would like to hear it and see it thank you very much Peter, mm. there's a few places around the internet people can find us. Isn't we are at youtube.com and twitch.tv forward slash team triple jump. All of our videos go out on YouTube and most of our streams happen on Twitch. And if you've got Amazon Prime, part of the package you are paying for includes a Twitch sub. So you can spend that on us and you will be like a normal subscriber at no extra cost. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. On all of those, we are at Team Triple Jump. And of course, patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump if you'd like to support us. Our website is triplej.mup. If you go there, you can find links to everything that we do. Very convenient hub, merch, hopefully, coming very soon. And why not leave a five star review on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. We'd really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Peter, there's just enough time to talk about this week's sponsor again, please. Yes, there is. Hey, that person who is older and wiser than you is asking which way you're going to get to your destination. I don't know. Uh, well, I think you should take this specific drive. Very good. Very nice. Thank you, everyone. Look after yourselves. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.